if you've installed DAS Studio, it looks actually slightly different than this. I'm gonna bring it back to that particular base. You do that up here under Window, Workspace, Select Layout. City Limits Light is currently the default layout that DAS Studio 4.16 comes with. This is the version I'm using. And if I hit that Accept button, then it looks like this. And this is a nice mixture between most tools you'll need. In fact, they give you more tools than you'll need and more tools than we'll discuss today. So that makes it slightly difficult to get your head around it. If you see this for the first time, you think, I don't know where to begin. What is what? I don't really, I don't, I don't, what do I do? For that reason, I'm going to close some of these palettes down and please work with me on this. In case you have a setup that you're currently working with and you would like to follow along, you can go over here to window workspace and then save your layout first then that's quite nice if you've got something that you've got your heart set on uh, save it as a layout and then go and select something like city limits light that will reset it back to base this is also good if you've made a mistake and you think damn i've used these palettes and i've just i've lost them i don't know where they are just set it back to city limits light and start from there the first thing I'll tell you about is these little palettes and how they work. So you can go and click on any of them to close a whole sidebar. That's quite nice if you need a bit more screen real estate. And if you wanted to have them somewhere else, you can just left click and drag off the panes. There's no real preview, just a tiny little um, rectangular icon. Then when you let go, it'll just go and come right off here. And then you can resize it and reposition it and put it on a different monitor. If you're working with multiple monitors, you can literally spread this around and have your own 3D cockpit. You can also put them back. So left click and drag, just put it back anywhere you like. So if I wanted my aux viewport somewhere over here, I can do that. Or I can just, you know, bring it back to here. Or, which is the thing that I'm going to do, also position wise, left click and drag to uh, onto another tab. And this is where that tab's going to be. Aux viewport is a secondary viewport that you can watch your framed up camera in while you're running around the scene in another viewport or vice versa. I won't use it only because I have got one screen and nothing else. So I'm going to right click here and hit on close pane. And that's my aux viewport gone. We're going to be totally fine without it. The scene tab here, that's the one I'll leave, but environment I'll close. So I'll kind of go around the, the whole interface here. At the bottom here, we have parameters, and this is one of the most important tabs in the whole interface. So I'm going to encourage you to put that somewhere properly center. I'm going to put it on the left hand side, left click and drag that over here so that it is underneath my content library. I'll go through here from there. This is we're going to sort out that side in a minute. The shaping tab I will close because those parameters, I will actually come back to it later, but I will close it for now just so that we're all on the same level here. Close it down. Face transfer is another tab we're going to close down. I will also show you how to bring these things back, by the way. Pausing tab, I'm going to close. The surfaces tab is another important one. I encourage you to put that also somewhere safe. So left click and drag it over here so that it's on the left hand side. Then there's the lights and cameras tab. And much like the shaping and the pausing tabs, those things that are displayed there will be available on the parameters tab. So I'll show you how to do that. It's, for me, it's much easier to look in one place rather than in several places. Sometimes it makes sense to have certain parameters displayed in various tabs, but you know, it's something that you work out as you keep working with Das Studio. So one of the things that is valuable about this is that we as artists and creators, all of us have a different approach to how we work with Das Studio. And that is why it's important to have so much variation. So as I said, what works for me might not work for you, but we'll use this as a starting point. So on the left hand side, then here we do something similar here. There's the install tab, which is actually not necessary because it's kind of consolidated together on the smart content tab. So install tab left click and drag another tab gone we need smart content and the content library because this is how we bring in uh, the content that we buy from the marketplaces and use in das studio so those things they're very important parameters we've talked about also very important surfaces very important keep that there draw settings is semi important but for the sake of brevity i'm going to go and close this down as well then we have render settings that's important and then finally we have simulation settings and this is important for for DeForce later, I might go and right click and drag that over here, but not really talk about it. It's just something that I'd like that I like to have out of the way, just accessible, just in case we do have a DeForce outfit. We want a DeForce app, we can totally do that with this. So it's that big blue button here. Simulate, that's kind of important every once in a while. Much like the big blue render button on the render settings tab. So that's one part sorted. 
the other part is the toolbars. So toolbars by default looks like this. And it kind of really depends if you're an icon person or more like a menu person. I personally don't use any of these icons. As some of them, they're kind of here. These I use, but I don't use those. And as I said before, I'd like to get rid of clutter that would confuse me, especially when you're learning Dash Studio. It's, you know, I encourage you to try it out. But if you find like you're not using something, then get rid of it. If you find you're using something more and more, then, you know, put it into a more central position. So I'm going to switch this around a little bit under Window Workspace Customize down here. And I will go to the right hand side where it says Activities, that says Advanced. I'll open that up and there I see two bars. If I open that up, I see that there's actually two toolbars that are available. One's the main toolbar. That's the one that is displayed right now, the whole top toolbar. And then the other one is Tools. So I'll go and right click on the main one, disable it. And then I'll right click on the tools bar and enable it. And then I hit apply and then things just get shuffled around a little bit and I hit accept. And then I only have the tools that I really need in Dash Studio and nothing else. Everything else is still accessible from the menus as well as icons, you know, just in case. So that's that. There might also be in the bottom right hand corner, there might be something called the lesson strip. You can enable and disable that under here, window workspace enable lesson strip. If you see something like this at the bottom right and you'd rather not see it, again, this gets rid of a few pixels. I know I'm a little bit pernickety, but that is, that's how you get rid of that. And now once you've done that, head over to window workspace and save this layout as something else. I might just call it stream demo and then it's saved. So if you wanted to switch between multiple workspaces, you can. Also note that you can change the look and feel of Dash Studio. I'll just quickly show you where that is before we get started. That is under style, Windows style, the select style here. And what we're currently using is the theme called Dark Side. There's three themes with the preview here. There's Dark Side, Highway, and Main Street. And if you use that, and I just click preview here on Main Street, you'll see that the position of the palettes all remain the same, but the kind of the look and feel of Dash Studio changes significantly. Lighter interfaces have kind of fallen out of favor, I guess. Just know it's there. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to hit cancel. Just know that, uh, you know, you can change the look and feel of Dash Studio to a certain extent.